everybody! Today we're going to be talking about section 8.4, which is on the human impacts on wetlands and mangroves. We've got mangroves on the left, and we've got um, wetlands on the right in these pictures here. All right, so the learning objective for today is that you can describe the impacts on human activity on wetlands and mangroves. The essential knowledge that you're going to gain is a little bit of background on wetlands and the ecological services that they provide, and then talking also about some of the threats to wetlands and mangroves. So we're going to start with wetlands here. So I know that we briefly have talked about wetlands a couple times here, but a reminder that wetlands are an area with soil submerged slash saturated in water for at least part of the year, but shallow enough for emergent plants. Now, wetland plants have actually adapted to living with their roots submerged in standing water. So think of plants like cattails, lily pads, reeds. Those are going to be the ones in wetlands. And if you've got the picture that you're looking at here, you've got a bunch of water feeding into this area, whether it's through some groundwater or streams that are going to be coming into this. You've got the cattails, you've got things like lily pads and ducks and Again, it's gonna be submerged in water for at least part of the year. Now, wetlands provide a bunch of ecosystem services, which we are going to cover those. So if you remember back to when we learned about ecosystem services, it's gonna be a little bit of a recap, a good reminder of these as we're getting closer to the AP exam. So for ecosystem services for wetlands, um, the first type is gonna be provisioning. So some of the provisioning services that they provide is habitat for animals, and for plant foods. So especially we as humans might be going, for example, duck hunters are gonna appreciate wetlands because they can get ducks provided from this wetland area. For regulating services, they do things like groundwater recharge, absorption of floodwaters, and carbon dioxide sequestration. Supporting services are gonna be things like water filtration. They provide habitat for a lot of pollinators. They cause nutrient cycling and also um, pest control. Then the last that we're going to have is cultural ecosystem services. So wetlands can provide tourism revenue, fishing licenses, camping fees, and also like educational and medical research for some of the organisms that are in these wetlands. Now wetlands have quite a few threats that can be posed to them. Specifically, um, since this is our unit on aquatic pollutants, some of the pollutants that can threaten wild wetlands are going to be nutrients like high nitrogen or phosphorus levels, also sediment, motor oil, pesticides, and endocrine disruptors. Another big one is going to be development. Wetlands are often filled in or drained in order to develop homes, parking lots, stores, or agricultural lands. Also, um, dam construction is going to cause a lot of water diversion. Well, water diversion is kind of the umbrella. Dams are one of them. But in general, water diversion is going to be where we have like upstream water diversion for things like flood control or agricultural or drinking water. And it's going to reduce the water floor flow and end up drying up wetlands. So if you look at this diagram here, this is the Florida Everglades, and this is going to be the historical wetland and the ways that we have the water flowing. Now, this is what it looks like afterwards if we have a lot of stuff that's been diverted, we have um, dams that are constructed, that kind of stuff, so you can see how that flow has been greatly decreased. Now, as I briefly mentioned, dam construction is also going to be a major form of flood control or using it for hydroelectric, hydroelectric electricity production, and that's also going to reduce water and reduce the sediment flow to wetlands. And remember that sediment flow can bring nutrients down to those wetlands. Another thing that humans like to do is overfishing, and that's going to disrupt the food web of the wetlands. It's going to decrease the fish predators. Um, it's going to also increase the prey, and it's just going to mess with that entire uh, food web that we have in these wetlands. Now we're going to shift to talking about mangroves. Mangroves are very beneficial and they are important to protect because mangroves provide an estimated $800 billion worth of value. And there's going to be quite a few ecosystem services that mangroves also provide. If you aren't super familiar with mangroves because we don't have them around here, uh, these are what they look like where they've got the trees and they've got the really long tap roots that go down into the water and they thrive with like the 
different levels of water where the tide goes in and comes out. But anyway, so the provisioning services that we can get from mangroves is going to be timber from the trees and also habitat for animal and plants that we like to eat. Some regulating services is coastal protection. These provide a buffer from like the increasing coastal like tides coming up or waves crashing in. And the trees also can do carbon sequestration. Supporting services are going to be water filtration and nutrient cycling. And some cultural ones are going to be tourism revenue, fishing licenses, and things like that. Now this diagram right here does like a beautiful job of showing all the different ecosystem services. I've highlighted some of them, but even if you want to pause on this and read through it a little bit more, um, things like the wood, how many people live near them, the climate regulation with that carbon sequestration. It just gives some more facts on like exactly how much filtration they do, how they protect the coast, tourism, things like boat tours and kayaking and how that tourism threat is going to be coming from mangroves. So you can pause in this and read through it if you want, or just kind of look at a little bit more in-depth information on all the points that I just gave for the different ecosystem services. Now, threats that we have coming to mangroves. Um, unfortunately, mangrove forests are being lost at a rate four times the overall global forest loss. So we're losing them much faster than even our regular other forests. And this is going to be coming because uh, deforestation is a big threat. So in developing countries, they're going to be cutting them down for fuel. But here in more developed areas, we like to cut them down for oceanfront property. We also have um, agriculture slash aquaculture. Mangroves are going to be removed to like make space for some of these. For example, like rice paddy fields in some mangrove forests in Asia are happening. We also will take them out for shrimp farming. Those are a couple examples, but you can either have threats from them physically being removed for this agriculture or aquaculture, or also you can look at the fact that we have a lot of pollutant runoff from agriculture, and that's going to be impacting these forests as well. We also just have direct pollution, like solid waste, just trash, oil, and chemicals that are going to be taken up by the roots. And then climate change, as we're having sea levels rising and temperatures changing, that can cause threats to mangroves. So here on the left side is a picture of how we're getting like aquaculture in what was originally mangrove forests. And then this is going to be a sad example of all of the different pollution, just waste and chemicals and all the things that these mangrove forests are potentially having to deal with. And this is going to be a diagram here, kind of similar to the last one. If you want to pause on here and read through it a little bit more, it gives more in-depth information about the specific threats, how much loss we're having, how climate change, coastal development, pollution, aquaculture, agriculture, and logging can all impact these mangrove forests. All right, and this is going to be a practice FRQ for 8.4, where you're going to practice the suggested skill of describing potential responses or approaches to environmental problems. So for this FRQ, I want you to describe how one specific human activity can lead to increased phosphorus levels in an estuary ecosystem. And just a reminder that estuaries like mangroves and wetlands both count as estuary ecosystems. And then also describe one step that could be taken to reduce the phosphorus inputs from the activity that you described above. So that's going to be your practice FRQ for 8.4. Those are your notes on 8.4 about human impacts to mangroves and wetlands.